On Tuesday, we sent a notice to DPP Claire Loftus containing proofs of serious criminal conduct by agents of her office. We copied that notice to the Minister for Justice Charlie Flanagan, to the offices of President Michael D. Higgins and to RTE Radio 1's Liveline programme. The next day, Stephen was contacted by Liveline producers and invited to discuss the contents of an anonymous poison pen letter that was sent to the Child Protection Authorities nearly eight years ago. The live radio interview with Philip Butcher Hayes lasted 25 minutes and detailed some of those shocking allegations which were later proven to be untrue. RTE have decided not to make the interview available to the public online for legal reasons. They have assured Stephen that this is just a precautionary measure and that they were completely unaware of Stephen's notice to the DPP at the time of requesting the interview. We accept these explanations and reassurances and are grateful to RTE for the opportunity to highlight on live radio some of the injustices that are being visited on those of us who stand up and speak out. But we believe that RTE is mistaken in not allowing the public to hear this interview because any related legal aspects have long since been fully and unequivocally settled in Stephen's favour. We take full responsibility for the publication of this interview via the Integrity Ireland Association and apologise in advance for the intermittent background noises. Talk to Joe on 1850 715 815. Poison pen letters, by a strange coincidence, there just seems to be quite a bit of it about, or at least coming to our attention, a number of different calls. I want to talk first, though, to Stephen Manning, who was on the receiving end, or at least the subject of, the most poisonous of poison pen letters that I've ever come across. Stephen. Hello, Philip. How are you? I'm very well. This was pretty horrifying stuff. Um, yes, it was. Um, uh, it's uh, like I say. We've, I've been asked wh- how much we can share with your listeners. Um, you've read the letter. You've seen how uh, some of the detail in it. Um, uh, given that most of it is absolutely untrue, it's about the worst thing you could possibly say about somebody, especially a married man with children. Yeah. Now it was a letter that was written by concerned parents, quote unquote, no names, <coughs> and sent to the HSE. Yes. Um, now, first of all, uh, we we do know now who uh, wrote that letter, but um, at the time we had no idea. But um, it's very uh, very clearly it wasn't any of the local parents. Yeah. Um, well, we're we're obviously skirting around some issues here for uh, yes, yes. very sound legal reasons. But what I want to talk to you about is what do you do? How do you react when something like this is said about you? Let me just quote some of the yes. passages from there with the obvious bit of background context here this is all what you are about to hear me reading now fabrication completely untrue nobody should take it that there is any smoke uh, emanating from a fire because there was no fire here at all but um, first paragraph our own children and other parents at the school have observed a number of bruises on both the M girls, them being the Manning girls, and have witnessed the children in a state of fear around their father. Yes. Mr M's wife has also spoken to other mothers at the school, stating that she is too afraid to stop the abuse as she too is regularly bullied by him and says no one will believe her anyway because she's Japanese. Mr M quickly became known in the area for what area for wild stories. And, and so on and so on. Yes. Um, well, I, what the listeners should know, uh, first of all, Philip, is that um, the, the context uh, in which this letter was written, and, and first of all, um, the, the le- it, this was part of a campaign, um, a, a campaign that went on at that time for about 18 months. And uh, <clears throat> it was a campaign to try and get me to drop a civil case for defamation that I had taken against a local person. Um, in my role a campaign as a, as a that soccer did, referee. D- well, the campaign wasn't just in uh, terms of letters to the HSE. You were you were also written about on an IRA website. Oh yes. A- and described as being a member of the Paris. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, th- well, this person had thought carefully what were the worst allegations that they could make that would completely uh, upset and distress and indeed terrify uh, someone in the in our position. 
and um, uh, the you know the the stuff on the I, uh, you know alleging that on the IRA website and so on. Um, it, it was clearly designed to bring unwanted attentions to our door, and we did get some of that. We actually did get some phone calls. Uh, we got death threats. Um, there were sex um, websites, you know, dating websites and that, put up with, with my false profile on it, both heterosexual and homosexual. They, uh, it, it, was, it was an astonishing um, campaign that went on for, uh, like I said, over 18 months, the main very part of it. And energetic over and very concerted. And this um, was just one of them, this letter that you're talking about now, but it, it is particularly sinister. Um, well, let me read some other passages <coughs> from the letter. Um, Guards searched the house where they found only an imitation gun, but the Manning girls have told other children since then that their dad has a real gun and have seen it. He and his wife have been dragging the children around hotels and the likes in the last few weeks, scaring the life out of them by telling them that people want to kill his family. Yes. Um, well, you see, like, like some of the most insidious um, uh, letters of this nature, there, there will be a little bit of truth mixed in with them in order to give it a little bit of credibility. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I was just going to ask you, what was the truth element there? Were you in hotels with the family? Uh, well, the, the truth element here is that I had actually bought a, an imitation uh, little plastic um, uh, little pellet gun thing from, from a sports shop. An air gun? Uh, no, no, not an air gun. It was a little... Um, uh, they, they fire little, little white plastic pellets. They're only a half a jewel, you know, okay. in power. You can knock over a paper cup with one, you know, or something like that. But I bought this um, because it looked real. And we'd already had death threats. And I mean serious, convincing death threats, which had been reported to the Gardaí. And I thought, because we lived in a, in, a, in a remote sort of location at the end of a, a short drive, that if anyone were to come to the front door and they were to see me, branching this thing, it might serve as a deterrent. Um, however, the uh, a, a slightly more sinister aspect of this story is that um, the the Gardaí had gone, uh, well, what I need to explain here, uh, Philip, without going into too much unnecessary detail, is that uh, the, the back story was that I had to take a defamation case against no, somebody the, in the community. Might be a bit, might be a bit too much backstory creeping I, in here, oh, but I see, right. well, identified but anyway, but there, there, was a, there was an incentive here, you see, and this person was connected. So the, we would later find out that the local guardie had gone to um, a, a local person who they, uh, they again, had leave with John. Stephen, Stephen, that way, we're, we're getting... We're getting to get him Steve, to, Stephen, uh, Stephen, please, to, to hang on one second. Sorry, we're, yeah. we're, we're veering into areas here which we actually can't at the moment. What I want to talk to you about, though, is... if I just, <coughs> let me, Allow me to read one more passage of this and then sure, just answer sure. this question. Uh, again, I'm going back to the letter, which has no substance to it at all. Just let me reiterate that. Uh, but the letter writer writing to the HSE denouncing you says he has made advances to other women at um, this national school and has recently threatened another female parent that if she did not tell her children to play with his children he was going to sue her she did not want her children playing with the M children because of what they were telling other children yes. when, when you were contacted by the HSE I assume your big difficulty was proving a negative, proving something that just wasn't the case to not be the case. How do you go about doing that? Right, well, uh, again, Philip, um, obviously the whole, the whole issue, and, and when, when a letter like this, this gets written, uh, it, it prompts a response by the uh, child protection people. As it because, should. Because this letter was not only put up on the internet for everyone to see, and it literally thousands, tens of thousands of people saw it, uh, but it was also sent directly to a manager at the child protection services um and i well, once i realized that that's what had happened i immediately called the hse and i insisted and demanded that they immediately uh you know take some action and by that i wanted to get make sure that my name was cleared before you know more smoke uh, would, would uh, surround this issue and because you know, we lived in a small rural community and the very existence of this sort of nonsense and, uh, you know, up on the, up, up on the internet. But it's also a risky strategy. Problem. I mean, it's the very human and natural thing to do, but it is also, and it could be interpreted by the HSE, as the actions of a bullying and controlling kind of character who is determined to clear their name uh, and there might actually be cause to investigate it. Well, did, you, did you have pause before going and doing that, before going to the HSE and thinking, God, is this necessarily the best course of action? Well, at the time, I didn't understand 
uh, how the HSE worked and in particular the Child Protection Services. I do now. But the first thing I did, uh, Philip, I went to the local school and um, that they were shocked and horrified when I told them. And of course, I reported it to the guards uh, as well as I had uh, as I had done with all the other issues that were happening, you know. Um, but the local school immediately, all of the teachers there, uh, uh, immediately were, uh, you know, they empathised with us, said, oh, this is terrible, Stephen, you know. And, and I asked them then, simply asked them, I said, w good. I said, would you please just give me one letter that states that, that the issues to do with the school are, are not true. In other words, that my children don't turn up at the school covered in bruises, that there's been no petition to have me stop going into the schools and things like that. And to my dismay, uh, they refused. Now, I would later find out that uh, the uh, the chairperson of the board at the time... Okay, we've named, we're about to name somebody else. Yeah, okay. no, I'm no, not going to name them, but no, the chairperson no. of the board no. at the time... No, no, Stephen, Stephen, the, please, the please the don't, 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 Stephen, Stephen, oh. Stephen, don't even go on to make the allocation. I don't know what it is that you're going to say, but I have a funny feeling that it's going to land you and I in a good deal of trouble with, with somebody. Well, with okay, uh, uh, well, the, the, let me put it this way. You see, as you're, you're reading out extracts of this letter, the whole, the reason I ended up taking um, a court action and winning it over, over this, uh, this letter was to, um, uh, to null, neutralize and, and nullify the, the false statements and allegations in this particular letter. Now, reading it out again over the, over the radio, uh, for the purposes of informing people of the, uh, you know, the, the despicable Ra nature the of these types of, of letters. I, I'm some people's that, mind of course, smoke without fire. I understand that you do need to dispel any suggestion that any of this was, uh, was uh, in any way true, which you've done. It's, it's nonsense. I, I can accept that yes. uh, as stated fact. But there are those who will probably try and argue differently. Uh, and let's just let's just see if we can neatly sidestep that and talk about how you dealt with officialdom and how long it took you to get them to accept that you were telling the truth. Well, uh, the the first surprising fact, uh, Philip, is that. The, uh, the HSE at the time, or TUSLA as it's known now, um, will act on, on an anonymous, unclaimed uh, letter of this sort. In other words, I could write the same thing about you right now, yeah. and according to their rules and regulations, they are obliged to deal with it. Now, uh, having done some research on this, I can tell you now that in America, they will not act on uh, a letter like this, and I think also in the UK, unless they can identify the author, because it's too easy for somebody to put pen to paper like this, make false claims, and then go and hide uh, from accountability, you know? And it would be the easiest thing in the world for them to say, yes, look, OK, Philip Boucher Hayes, write your letter about Stephen Manning um, to us over your own signature, yes. and we will keep that between the two of us. We will keep your allegation anonymous, but we need to know who you are before you make an allegation like this. Well, it's obvious, you know, I mean, to me, it's just, uh, and, and the, the second thing that I was uh, quite, um, quite surprised about is once the HSE did send um, a social worker down, they, uh, they do an investigation then, um, a formal investigation of the family, and this includes um, examining how we live, going to our local doctors, going to the school, going to the guards, going to anyone, uh, any so, uh, professionals that have any dealings with us, and getting their input. And then on top of that, they actually took my children, and my children at the time were aged, I think, I'd say 11, 9, and 6, I think. And my youngest is a Down syndrome boy. And he literally couldn't articulate a sentence at that time. He wouldn't have been able to speak properly. But they were taken away away from the parents were taken into a private room and according to the older girls uh they were I, i'll use the term here carefully but badgered it would be you know it, anyway they were questioned and there were questions leading questions were put to them such as does your father smack you or you know does your father do this or does your father do that and Thankfully, and I say thankfully, apparently my son just said, oh, daddy, no, no smack, no smack, daddy, no smack, you know, which, uh, which would be the truth, of course. But it's, it's astonishing to think that if he'd have said something different, this could have led into another uh, investigation. Mm. And um, this was, for me, this was one of the hardest things. And I was, I mean, I had every confidence at the time that once the investigation was done, that we would be cleared. But 
Uh, of course, you don't have to talk to your kids in advance. You can't say anything to them before going into such a meeting that might lead to the suspicion that you had coached them. Oh, God, no. No, I, I, I know. Look, well, this is the whole point. Um, so there's a real uh, leap of faith in your own parenting on one level as well, isn't it, that your yeah. kids will... Yes, well, I did, see, I did have absolute faith. I mean, you know, at the time, you know, we were a very close-knit family. Um, uh, you know, they, they interviewed me and my wife. There was, there was nothing in... Uh, there was nothing to support any of these vicious allegations. Mm -hmm. And we got a letter from the HSE 100% clearing us and saying that there is absolutely no cause for concern and that the, the letter that was sent to the HSE uh, appears to be a malicious contrivance um, that was designed to do exactly what it did, which was to try and um, intimidate me into taking a particular course of action and to you know, make it as uncomfortable as possible for us to stay and live in that location. And we did eventually have to get up and leave um, because, uh, you know, it just became... Uh, it was just too much, you know, it, it was, there were too many questions being asked and everything, and in the end we had to get up and relocate to and another so, location. So even though you were able to point to official exoneration, yes. total clean being of health, you should have had copies of this thing made, laminated and handed them out to everybody, you still didn't feel able to stand your ground? Well, I did stand my ground, uh, Philip, but I had three young children. And um, I, this, um, the business of me going to the school and asking for them to just give me a letter of support that I could publish on the internet, when that was refused, then the, some tensions arose between myself and the school. And um, I, on two or three occasions, I went back. Did you show them the HSE letter? <clears throat> oh, yes, they, they're, they're all very aware. But uh, as I was trying to say earlier, Philip, uh, there were, and, and I can say it very loosely here, there were connections between some of the people that I'd had to take the lawsuit against. Well, it is Ireland. And so on, you know, and, and, and the, as a result, I was very disappointed and that they didn't do the right oh. and moral thing and were simply just give me something in writing. Were, were the kids yeah. getting talked about behind the backs? Were they conscious of stuff going on? Who, the children? Your children. Um, oh, yes, of course. Now, um, my, my youngest, uh, my son, of course, he would have been... Uh, he would he would be unaware, you know, because of his uh, Down syndrome mm -hmm. condition. But um, yes, most certainly, there the, the were there were incidents at school, and there were difficulties, which as a parent, you know, you'd be sensitive to. And um, yeah, we we decided, okay, you know, we we love Ackle. It was it was a beautiful location. We did have friends there. But uh, in one notable incident, for example, there was um, a, a friend of ours. I'll just say she had a child at the school as well. And uh, she came to visit us and um, explained to us, because she had a small business in the locality, that she was sorry, but she couldn't be seen dealing with us anymore. So and that was you the were sort, of, sort of thing that happens in a rural community. At least she was brave enough and honest enough to say so, you know, say something to us. You were boycotted? Well, uh, not, not boycotted from... It was only... She only had a small business, a local business, but she basically advised us that although she thought we were decent people and everything, she had a business to run and that had to come first and she didn't want to be seen uh, around us because of these accusations, even okay. though they, uh, they had been disproven. Stephen, at the end not. of the day, did the poison pen letter writer win? You've left. Um, well, uh, as I said earlier, I, I now know who that individual is and I've reported them uh, to the, the guards. It doesn't matter, they're still there. You're yes. gone. Well, well, it, 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 in that, in this sense, yes, in, in the sense that if I decided today that I dislike somebody, I can go and write an anonymous letter like this, send it into the Child Protection Services, and knowing that they are obliged by their own rules and regulations to do an investigation of that person. And as you know yourself, Philip, you know, um, th this whole concept that there's no smoke without fire, you know? And uh, it was it was enough that my character was impugned. I mean, part of the reason for, for that letter and the, and the surrounding campaign was to try to have me removed as a sports official as well. This was another, you know, a little side income that, that, I, that I have. You know, I, 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 I'm a referee for um, soccer matches. Um, but it backfired in as much as I was supported at the time by the Referees Association. They did their own investigation. And uh, But it's just the, the turmoil that's caused in your life. And uh, you know, the people looking at you go down to the supermarket and you're asking yourself, are they looking at me just because they're um, curious? Are, have they already judged me? Are they suspicious? Or am I just imagining all this? You know, am I getting paranoid? You know, but uh, you're constantly uh, uh, feeling that you're having to defend yourself and you have to explain yourself. Um, and nobody should have to do that, especially when there's no substance to, the, to these type of allegations.
just let me clarify one thing with pretty much a yes or a no answer if I can. The, the letter writer wasn't somebody living locally, as you've named the area that you were in, it wasn't somebody who lived there, was it? The, well, let, no, we say that the letter writer, it's possible that a few people collaborated together. It's actually highly likely because of some of the sort of um, half informations, if you like, that are in the, in the letter. Uh, however, the, the person who physically typed out that letter before it was put up on the internet and sent to the HSE, I know who that person is. They live in another location okay, in that's Ireland. All, that's all I want. They, they, don't, they don't live in Ackle. Just they don't live the, in Ackle, but the, they are the, directly the, the, connected. The mechanism, the mechanism by which uh, this was done Yes. Ve venompen.com was yeah. something that I hadn't come across before. What is Venom Pen? Um, it's a, I think it's owned by a Canadian, uh, because I did try to track track down, but it's a, it's a website that facilitates um, horrendous pers personal attacks, anonymous personal attacks on other people. Um, I don't even know if it's still in existence, because uh, it's some time back since I had to have dealings with them. But I did try to contact the owner, the CEO, I was able to track him down. And, um, you know, I, I implied that it, this had to come down, had to come off, you know. Um, but actually, the business of trying to get something like that removed is almost impossible. And for all I know, it might still be up there. I think the domain name hasn't been re-registered recently because I wasn't able to do in the time that we had yeah. uh, find out an awful lot about it myself because a lot of it seems to have disappeared. But the concept was that you could go and post any old rubbish about anybody anonymously yes. on on this site uh, and for yes, whatever so there were some posts what. on there without going off track too much here Philip uh, uh, there were some posts for example where disgruntled employees could say shocking things you know they're directly insulting yeah. people that they know by name and they presumably name there was loads of advertising you know, around it or whatever yeah like Fred Smith you're a such and such you're a disgusting this and the other but this website was in the business of allowing people to do this anonymously and of course I, I imagine they were making profits on advertising I suppose on the site you know okay alright Stephen thank you very much for talking to us moral of the story at the end of the day Stephen the moral of the story is um, that we need legislation to um, change uh, the powers of um, the Child Protection Agency that they should not accept or even acknowledge anonymous um, accusations of this nature. Um, that would be the first thing. And, and the other thing is this, is that if this happens to you, you really have no choice but to fight back. And when you fight back, you have to fight back with everything because your good name, your integrity, and the, uh, the cohesion of your family is the most important thing of all. Is the other lesson that you can't necessarily expect to win um, sorry, could you say that again, uh, Philip? You, you can't necessarily expect to win, Steve. Well, it, you, you see, it's it's the old story. Once once a lie has been told, it can never actually be taken back. It goes halfway around the world. Yeah, before the that's right. Catch once a lie down. has been told. And that's the nature, and that's why uh, we have defamation laws, you know, because lying and slanders and defamations of this nature are so insidious. They, as soon as they're released, there's no putting them back in the box. Not completely. And, uh, you know, uh, for the rest of my life, uh, any search on the, uh, on the internet with my name attached to it or whatever, mm. this, some of this stuff still comes up. And there do literally is nothing you can do about do it. Do you have the means, though, to go to court to vindicate your name or to inflict some kind of a punishment on the people who have done this? Because that's an expensive prospect. That's, that's yes. 100,000 of yours on the line. Yes, well, and, 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 like, there were, uh, without, again, uh, drifting too far, there were two connected court cases. One of them was about this letter. Um, I did eventually win that case and um, I was awarded uh, 25,000 euros. But, of course, I cannot collect it and there's no mechanism, um, pro pro you know, reliable mechanism to go and collect that because the person uh, who was found guilty can move the transfer of their assets across to their, their wife or whatever, you know what I mean? And it, it just makes it almost impossible. Stephen. But also, prior to that, I hired a barrister and a solicitor um, uh, in in an, in, an, in the original defamation case, and he's incurred all and, costs. Yeah, that was settled, but nearly two thirds of the settlement money went to the solicitor and the barrister. So, and again, that that took two and a half years of you know okay. s great angst and distress and worry. And in the meantime, you know, like I say, during the night time, I was getting threatening phone calls and all this sort of stuff. And 
you know, it was just horrible. So the the like whole experience was an shocking. Yeah, hell. and 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 the, and. and Part of, uh, sorry, a part of the side story here, Joe, is the failure, the absolute dismal, abysmal failure of the authorities to track down and nail the people who did this, even though I gave them all the information, okay. and even though at one point I had the English police involved, they had information they were willing to give our local guards to nail these people. And uh, oh, literally over a period of about three and a half years, myself, my solicitor, everybody begging the guards to just make a phone call and collect the information that would identify okay. who is behind all okay. this. All right, I'm going to have to leave it there, Stephen. I'm afraid I'm totally, totally behind on breaks because we've got involved in so many absorbing stories. But thank you very much for your call. We'll take another break. Talk to Joe on 1850 715 815. With thanks to RTE for covering the story. As a professional courtesy to RTE, and in light of their stated legal concerns, we have not identified the perpetrators by name in this presentation. You can view that information at the following link.